You all know gratitude, so I'm not going to waste my time trying to define what gratitude is. It means to be grateful. So we'll be talking plenty of things about finances. And um, we got to uh, Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. Let somebody open it. That's our pilot text. We'll be looking at the four pillars of financial success, right? Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10. Anybody that is there, read for me, please. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. So shall your bands be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wines. We established there that in those that two verses, you see four cardinal pillars that you can build your finances around. There are many factors that lead to somebody succeeding financially, but these are just pillars around which you can build whatever you plan to do. And we said the first one is honor the Lord, which amounts to kingdom investments. We did a two-part series on that. You can get the message. I don't want to go back to that again, but nobody will actually succeed financially if you don't learn how to honor the Lord with your finances. It must be the reason why you are making the money. It must be the person controlling how you use the money. That's what it means to honor the Lord in summary. Then number two pillar, we say, it says that honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of your increase. So the increase, your increase is important to God. That is entrepreneurship. And that's what we have been dealing with. The third pillar is your bands shall be filled with plenty. Your bands talk about savings. Nobody will do well if you don't have a savings culture. Then the fourth pillar is it says your presses shall burst forth with new wine. Whatever you have amassed from your entrepreneurship or your increase, it must become presses that investments that will burst forth. So the fourth pillar is investment. So pillar one is kingdom investment, honoring the Lord. Pillar two is entrepreneurship, having increase. Pillar three is your bonds, savings. Four is investments. We already looked at honoring the Lord, like I said, and we started on entrepreneurship last service. And this is the second part. Today, I want to look at entrepreneurship under three topics, under three subtopics. I call this entrepreneurship in... Uh, Semicolon in front, you now write entrepreneurship, talent, technique, and temperament. Talent, technique, and temperament. Now, we established that entrepreneurship is God's goal, is end goal for your wealth creation and your wealth generation. It is the main revolving point that attracts God's blessings. Your salary is already fixed. But for God to bless you beyond your salary, there must be something you are doing that he can put his blessing on top. Entrepreneurship actually removes the cap on your blessing. It removes the lead on your finances. It means that you alone can determine the extent to which you prosper financially. Some of you doing eight to five work. Like I said, it's not, nothing wrong in that. But if you put your salary, say you're earning 100,000. In a year, that's 1.2 million. You know that some people make that 1.2 million in one week as profit on just one service. So that is why you must understand that entrepreneurship is very key to God's hand. You can only expand your earnings with entrepreneurship. It removes the limit on what you can earn. We've also showed us that 8 to 5 p.m. work is not a crime. There is nothing wrong in that. It's just that as you do that, your 8 to 5 work, let it be grooming you to become an entrepreneur. Don't be in the office where all you do is just complain about your boss, complain about everything, but you are not learning critical things that you can use when you leave the place. If that business is succeeding, it means the man is doing some things right. He may not be totally perfect. So you look at what he's doing right, remove the ones that he's not doing right, and start imbibing such culture into yourself. For example, there is a way a rich man talks you should look out for that and start learning it. There is a way rich people walk. There is a way they dress. So all this that uh, dress is not important, you hear all those things, yes, you should not live your life trying, trying to do that. But the fact is, there are some places as well you cannot enter with some kind of dress. They will not just listen to you. In fact, I had learned this year that there are some places you cannot belong to with some kind of cars. And as upsetting as it can be, is the reality on ground. And so it is up to you to start developing yourself 
to start developing, moving yourself from a place where you can begin to break into such circles. I lost a contract or a service or a job early this year because of my under accord. The madam just feels that with that car, there is no way I will not run away with their money. And a month after I changed my car, my friend said, you should have done this two months ago. He said, I don't know what is your problem. That, that's why they didn't give you that work. Of course, I told him not every money is my money because I have some personal principles I live my life by. Not every money is my money. So I don't cry over money that I don't get. Now, it's not that the money did not pay me. <laughs> but I come up with life philosophies to help myself and control my emotions so that that way I will not do things that is unbecoming of me. But the fact of the matter is, it is the way some of these things are done. You have to start thinking that way. So, when you are in a place, you are doing it to five now, start looking at the way they are arranging things. Start looking at the way they, they do deals. And when your boss is negotiating, what are the things that they do? When you see him talking to his friends, it's not the time. You know, some of us, when we get into the circle of big people, we are too quick to say nonsense. When you are supposed to keep quiet and start looking at what these people... By the virtue of my training in ministry, I did protocol for a long time. I've been driving ministers. I, if, I, if I start dropping names... You would think uh, otherwise. I've been driving ministers for a long time. And if there's anything, all of them, all, when they come back again, they always ask for me. Because even if I have to talk with them, I'm not busy wasting time asking them, how was your flight? Well, you are already here, sir. That's your business. I start asking questions that are important to the ministry I want to build. Ah, sir, how do you prepare before you want to have your, before you want to preach? What are the things you do? And those things, it looks funny. It looks like I don't know what I'm doing, but I am gathering, 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 gathering. So when people look at me now, I'm not enjoy I didn't stumble into some things. They were carefully planned. I remember a woman of God. She writes on Guardian, on Vanguard, rather, every Sunday. There was a period she came to a church in the city of Abekuta that I was attending at that time, and I was a protocol. He offered money. Because of the protocol service, I, I didn't collect. I said it wasn't done for money. And he told me that day, that was 1996, that, that men will serve you. He said, I've not seen anybody. You know, being a woman, it's, it's difficult for some protocol guys at times to serve a woman minister the same way they will serve a man minister. Uh, don't worry. As you advance, you will understand some of these things. But for me, it made no difference. Because the grace of God is not gender specific. God's grace can come on anybody. When Paul said women should keep quiet, it was those ones that were gossiping during service. He was not saying that women should not teach. But some people were busy gossiping during service. So he said, okay, let the husband tell them to shut up. If they want to say anything, let them tell their husband when they get home. But don't let anybody tell you because you are a woman that the grace of God cannot come on your life. God, can, God that is using Joyce Meyer can use you from here to the ends of the earth. And I need you to walk in that consciousness. Hallelujah, somebody. So it's very, very key that you, you understand that and you begin to move in that direction. So it's not wrong to be doing eight to five work. Now, we also showed us from the Bible that entrepreneurship is as old as time. God himself did business with Jesus and he gained the old world. <laughs> and you see, I've shown us different examples of people in the Bible that did one thing or the other. Even the Proverbs 31 woman, the Bible says that she sees a field and she buys. So you are an entrepreneur. If you have a business that you own, you are into buying and selling, network marketing, consulting, skill development, you are rendering services, and you are getting paid for it. That is entrepreneurship. Anything you do that can bring money to your table. You could just, it could just be that you are making cloth. Moody is a fashion designer. And yesterday I was somewhere in a tailoring shop and a guy was telling me, in fact, the person stays in Sumitel, around Sumitel here. I had to invite him to church. He said he will come one of these days that, I, that I've really, this just 30 minutes, I really changed his perspective. But you know, he was talking about Moody. He said, Moody, that there are people that just deposit 10 million monthly just for him to be making clothes. I said, no, I can't even take some people's own because the list is long. And all this fashion designer that I was talking about, it's co work with Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Simple is Taylor. Fashion designer is just funkifying the name. Taylor, not Taylor. And it's that same Taylor they told you to come and learn some years back. You abused your father, abused your mother, that they are looking down your destiny. 
Now, the people that lent it with you, their destiny is flying. In as much as education is good, I don't joke with it, but your education should actually enhance your entrepreneurship skill. See our footballers in the 80s. A lot of them, Philippe Osundu, they were doing well. They were Canada 88. They did fantastically well as players. But because they didn't go to school, their entrepreneurship side of their head was not developed. And a lot of them signed themselves away for nothing. Contracts that they did not even read. For a token, they signed their lives away. And that is how a lot of them ended up with talents. In those days, you can't play football because your parents will say that you want to be a doctor. But now, parents are the ones driving their children to football academy. Where you will play football one week, by Thursday you get a lot three hundred thousand pounds. Ha! Have you converted that into naira before? Even for hundred thousand pounds, I will not leave the field. I'll be playing every day. Even when they blow final time, I said, ah, ah, referee, no, put the ball down. We we want to play. <laughs> so you know how many people waiting for me in the village on this morning? Say I will play this thing. <laughs> so it's. It will begin, we have to begin to look for skills that you have now. You have to begin to look into yourself. This education that I'm doing. You know, when I was in university, it even, I was working anyway. <laughs> but you know, there were guys that were just photographers. They were also students. And those guys paid their way through school. They were big boys. They were living large. A lot of them are living by that business now. And if any one of our own mates started the thing, it will be after school. And they will have to learn what those guys learned practically. So it's very, very key that we understand that we have to start looking inside. So you're an entrepreneur. So far, you have something you can use to get money. They have to pay for it. A lot of you are doing things free of charge. Yes, at a level, yes. But it's time you begin to look at it in 2019 that this thing that I'm not collecting money on top, is it not better I start collecting? Let me give you a good example. One of the things I do by default, not even my professional work, is that I give solutions to, uh, to problems. I didn't see it that way, actually, until one of my older friends actually called my attention to it. They said, like, do you know that when every one of us gets into trouble, even though we are far older than you, you are the one we call first, and you seem to know somebody, you seem to have somebody that will solve the problem. Say, so you better start looking at this as business. When I said, that's true. I can actually start a, can a career counseling, something, something. You people will come and be paying for it before I solve the problem. So it doesn't have to necessarily be that you start looking for what you don't have. That is always the problem with Christians. You leave what God has put inside you, then you admire uh, Nathaniel Bassi for playing the trumpet. And you, you can play ordinary keyboard. You don't value it. You, just, you are just admiring somebody's popularity and want to be like that, and you are neglecting what you have, and one guy is killing you. That one is going to the bank every day, smiling and coming back. So what can you do that can bring money? Every believer should endeavor to have something that can bring in money. You hear Christians tell you that the wealth of the right, uh, wicked is for the just, Abi, that there's a wealth transfer coming. You know that thing is half teaching. There's no wealth transfer coming, no. It's an unrighteous God that will take money from a hardworking sinner and give it to a lazy Christian. Not the God that I serve. So when we talk about wealth transfer, wealth transfer simply means that you are doing something that God can have a reason to take what belongs to an unbeliever and channel it to you because you are found doing something. Not that you are sitting in the house and you are quoting, oh, the wealth of the wicked is laid down for the just so that the just can enjoy themselves and travel to America. It's a lie. It's only in your dream that you'll be dreaming and traveling. You will not go anywhere. So all this wealth transfer teaching as good as they are, godly as they are, you must have something. I mean, an unbeliever is waking up 5 a.m. He's coming back 7 p.m., walking around the clock, and he's making money. And you, you are sleeping. Even the prayer that you say you should pray, self, you know you are not praying it. Then you are praying that God should transfer the money of that person and transfer to you. Even the bank, self, will not allow that transfer to go through. So, that is on money transfer. So think about it. There is, not, there is no wickedness in God. He can't take the wealth of somebody that is working out and give it to a lazy, sluggard, slothful, never willing to go an extra mile Christian. You know laziness can be defined and when you do just enough. Some of you, you cannot go extra mile. That's another definition of laziness. If you always do just enough, you are a lazy person. Hardworking people do more than enough. If you look at the parameters of your job, for instance, 
and all that it takes, you do it and you don't try to do extra. Even with your guy's bad attitude, you are a lazy person. And his own bad attitude does not excuse your laziness. Because what you do becomes part of you. Practice makes permanent. It doesn't make perfect. It makes permanent. It becomes part of you. That's why at times you see people in the olden days when we're growing up, you see a lot of our homes had our aunties, had our cousins, older people coming to live. They were more or less doing housework like they were house elf. But a lot of those people, by the time they live and marry, they end up being better people. Because it is a principle of the Bible. You are not faithful in somebody's own. God will not give you your own. It's there in the Bible. So if you have the habit of just doing just enough, nobody can inconvenience you. Even God himself cannot inconvenience you. And then you should fast at 4 o'clock. Once it's 4 like this, you set alarm. You, you dive into the kitchen. Like the fridge is running away. You are a lazy Christian. Mm -hmm. I need to put that one inside. So all of you that are breaking fast at 4 because I say 4. Wait till 7 p.m. <laughs> Do 9 p.m. Say, Pastor, I will show Pastor today. I'm not eating for the whole day. Cherry, let's do it, baby. Why are you looking? <laughs> it's just one deal. So it's very important that we understand that. Let's, let's, let's be willing to go extra mile. But I want to take it further today. I want to look at those three things I mentioned. Let me start with talent. Talent is just the natural gift that you have. It is not the gift of the Holy Spirit. Remember the parable Jesus Christ said the man gave, said he gave all of them talents. First, uh, Romans 12 2 said everybody has been dealt a measure of grace. Everybody created by God has one or more talent. Some of us have only one. Why God does that, I don't know. Some have two. Some have eight. But you see, the problem we don't understand is those that have one are the lucky ones. Because their parameter of judgment is very, very streamlined. Those with multiple talents are the ones that, go and look at it, they are the ones that struggle. That's why Paul says, this is one thing I do. Not because Paul cannot do more than one, but he says one thing I do. Because at times, in multitude of talent, there is always a problem. You may not even know which one to focus on. Have you seen some fantastic musicians that are also called or they feel they are called to be pastors and they struggle between the two? At times they want to preach, they end up singing. <laughs> that is what can happen when you have multiple talents. But that's by the way, anyway, God has given everybody one or more talent. There is something that you have. There is a talent, if, a, 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 an ability. It's a skill, it's an ability rather that God gives something you can do better than others without necessarily expending too much effort. Some of you can fight naturally. You don't need to go and learn. It's a bad talent. It's a very, very bad talent. <laughs> well, I've never met some people, trouble just comes to them. They just know how to make trouble naturally. That's a bad talent, a negative talent for that matter. But there are things you can do. Some of you, some of you know how to cook. You don't necessarily learn it from your parents. Once you see ingredients, there's just something in you that can put it together and bring something good out of it. Those are talents that God has put. The obvious ones are the singing, the drawings, the artistry, acting, uh, stand-up comedy. Those are the ones we can see. Creative arts mostly suffer in this area because they have plenty talents around them. But there is something inside you that you have a talent for. And I'm telling you today that entrepreneurship starts from your talent. You don't have to look for what you don't have. Start with what you have and start building around it. You remember the wife of the prophet in 2 Kings chapter what's that now? I think 2 Kings 13 have you? Yes, yeah, 2 Kings 4. She was crying. She had nothing. But yet her deliverance came with the oil that is in our house. What will change your financial situation around is inside you. You are good with dressing. It simply means, do you, you, you know in the US there are image makers? They pay them millions of dollars just to style celebrities or style people. They tell you, okay, combine this this way, combine it this way, combine it that way. There are some, all they do is publish, they are publicists. They just manage people and try to make them popular. That is what gave birth to all these social media uh, whatever that we do these days. So what is the talent that you have that you can build around? Is it singing? Are you good with your hands? 
my elder brother didn't have to learn electrical repairs. It just comes to him naturally. And because it comes to him naturally, it fell on some of us by extension. So even my house, I, I, I sort all those small, small things. Except when it becomes too big and I don't want to bother my head. But it was because I saw my elder brother do it since we were small. And today, every time he's complaining about money, I say you have more than two things inside you you can use to make money, but you are simply just lazy. So what is it that you have? What talent do you have that you can start building around? Is it that you are good at organizing things? Event management is becoming a multi-billion naira business in the country. People will always do parties. At least not everybody will be like me. I hate parties anyway. So it's very, very key. You can build your entrepreneurship venture around your talent. Everyone has a talent, at least one. Some have more than one. I believe the person with one talent, like I said, stands a better chance or should stand a better chance at making it work. But most times they neglect it and focus on what others have. The wife of the prophet, a good example. You see that in Second Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7. There is a talent in you that you can build your entrepreneurial endeavors around. Talent is an attitude aptitude ability that you are born with it is what you naturally can do i take that again talent it's an aptitude now not an attitude an aptitude or ability you are born with it is what you naturally can do better than others with minimal effort it is that special ability that makes you do something well you may also train your talent for optimal productivity but ultimately ultimately talents are naturally given their endowments given by god a good example you can use Ronaldo and Messi. Ronaldo is a less talented person than Messi. It's just that he put a lot of hard work and he was able to meet up with that standard. For Messi, some of those things come naturally. There are some footballers that you just see them, you know that these people remember Ronaldinho Gacho, for instance. Ronaldinho doesn't have to even do training. He will go and drink till Saturday, come back to training, and he will still perform magic. The best days of his life were sometimes when he was coming from parties. Of course, those kind of lifestyles caught up with them invariably. But the fact is, that is what talent is. But outside your talent, you can be a hardworking person and meet up with the person that is talented. So you can work on your talent. Maybe what the talent you have now, you don't appreciate it, you don't like it. It's because you have not put work on it. You feel you want to be a speaker. You want to speak. But every time you, you are afraid of people, it is because you are not working on your talent yet. You start first by looking at the mirror and start practicing. There is no great speaker that has not had time to practice. None. None. I still have tapes on my top of my wardrobe. Long when I didn't even know I was going to do ministry, that I was preaching, you know, those old cases that you press and you start recording. So it's not today, and I'm talking about 1994. So it's not a day's job. The reason why you are thinking you are not talented is because you are not doing anything about the talent. Once you know you can sing, what are the extra things you can put on the music that can bring you profit? Because talent is never enough. Tell your neighbor, say talent is not enough. So it's important that you understand that. It's very key. Some can draw naturally. For some, it's sports. Creative arts, music, instrumentation, acting, writing, critical thinking, mathematics. Some people are just that good in mathematics. Some of you, even if they teach you algebra from now to tomorrow, you will still not understand it until you cram it. Decision making. You know, there are some people, they can just quickly sit down, look at the facts, and give you a decision. Networking. Mm -mm, accounting, graphics, photography, stand-up comedy, troubleshooting, teaching, communication, administration, management, relaxation, actually. Oh, you've not met a chairman of enjoyment. When you meet those people, they are talent. If you have 100,000, they can make it go around <laughs> in drinks and food and everything. Those people, they should end up being party people, just organizing parties. There are some people that's the only time their anointing comes alive. Only time they see party. That's the only time. It's only when they see party. Any other thing without that activity does not excite them. That's why Mary could cook and the sister, uh, Martha, Martha is the one cooking. Mary is the one at the feet of the master. It's not that Martha's ministry was not important. For Jesus then, it was just the issue of timing. But ultimately, after she was done, all of them still ate. 
So there are people like that, and I don't think we should make them feel uh, less important, actually. Conflict resolution, makeup, event management, adaptation. You know, adaptation is a talent. Some of the adaptation, talent, your ability to blend with any situation you find yourself. It takes talent. That's why some people, when they have problems, you see it on their face. Some people, inside their problem, that's when they add weight. <laughs> because they've learned how to adapt. <laughs> and those people, when you take them from here, throw them in any country, they seem to survive. It's actually a talent. And in the U.S., some people teach it as survival skills. So they take them and they teach you how to survive. <laughs> they are just profiting on the talent that they have, nothing more. And that some of these skills are not yet blown in Nigeria. For instance, in the U.S., you know there's this marriage counselor outside church that people go and see and they pay money or you have a psychological issue, you go and see. Now it's gradually creeping into the country. I heard it's begin, becoming a big business in Lagos. It has not reached Port Harcourt yet. You can train yourself in that area and start taking advantage of it. Where you counsel the people that are uh, maybe in their minds, they have issues, all these people are addicted to drugs and all those things. There are areas that the Lord can open your eyes to see. And you can quickly start plugging into it now. Instead of waiting and you have abused Buhari too much. In fact, the way you abuse Buhari said, Buhari said, don't tire. So you can build a business around your talent. Just ensure you know that the talent, you know the talent that you have. And let the Holy Spirit, let it lead you in the direction of the most profitable one. For those of you that have more than one talent, you don't know what to do. It's, you are confused. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to tell you. This part of your skill is what you can build on. You may be good at event management. You are good at cooking. You are good at makeup at the same time. The Lord may not want you to start the three at the same time. He may just be telling you to move from one and join the other. When I started uh, out, I started first with employing accountants and giving companies. They are my staff, just like what banks do. They are my staff. They pay me, I pay them from there migrated it, improved it, became audit, became tax. Now I am buying up, trying to buy up some businesses. That's other people that are doing things that I don't really want to do, but I know there's still money there. So you just find those people, bring them in, give them a stake in the company, let them go and also the money. If they bring uh, one million, for instance, at the end of the day, and I see that in the office, I still get 200,000, they take the rest, it's still profit. So you have to learn how to begin to think in that area, hallelujah somebody. So stop admiring people and their talents. Eh? It's good to appreciate what people have, but focus on what you have and start developing it. You have admired Kim Kardashian enough. It's time to look elsewhere and start looking at what God can do in your life. The top of me social media, just to see all the people doing well. Then you now post at the end of the day. Oh, if only my father was rich. Or all kinds of funny, funny posts. There's one I... Uh, I read recently. Ah, tell them there's a difference between plenty and much. Uh, as I saw it, I think I saw that one today. I said, so somebody must have not given him money. Maybe try to borrow money. The person said, no, I'm not giving you. You know, people, <laughs> you just go to social media. We know what is happening to you. Nah, nah, you need to grow beyond that. Leave what people are going through and start focusing on yourself. 2019 is coming. What are you going to still be this way? What are you going to do better in 2019? What are you going to do about that gift that you have, that skill that you have? They've told you. Prophecy. They've told you naturally. Even the witches have told you in your dream that we cannot kill you because of this gift that you have, but you are not doing anything about it. Do something about it. Tell your neighbor that said, do something about it. There is something you can do better than me. You need to work on it. Hallelujah, somebody. The next one is technique. And the last one is temperament. But let me see if I've covered everything I want to cover on talent. Yes. So it's very, very important that you develop your talent. Develop it. Develop it. What can you do better? If you go back tonight, I want you to go and sit down, get a piece of paper, get your jota, get a pen, and start assessing your life and ask yourself, what talent do I really have? What can I do? If you have multiple, fine. List them out. Then start arranging them in the order of strength. This particular one, am I strong here or weak here? We all have one or little of some, but when you are able to separate it, now start prayerfully looking at it. What can I do around this? Let us stand up and appreciate God for today. Like you, I'm strong. I'm strong.